you say enough words and speak quickly enough, suddenly cruelty to animals is irrelevant, concern for the environment is irrelevant, and we have no ethical obligation toward people who are starving in the third world. Um, I suppose if you think that, the envi that environmentalism is irrelevant, that cruelty to animals is irrelevant to morality, uh, and that we have no obligation to people in the developing world, then the negative is the side that you should go on. Uh, if, however, like the vast majority of Americans, you don't need... Uh, well, I don't know. I mean, I'm just so uh, flummoxed by the idea that you need an ethical framework to say that environmentalism, global poverty, and cruelty to animals matter. I'm going to continue to assert that they do, continue to assert that if you light a cat's tail on fire, as one example, that's an unethical act, regardless of the rights that the cat has or doesn't have. It's unethical to abuse animals, it's unethical to defile the environment, and it's unethical to cause animals to, to cause human beings to starve unnecessarily. The United Nations released a more than 400-page report. It's called Livestock's Long Shadow. And in Livestock's Long Shadow, these agricultural economists from the UN suggested that raising animals for food, eating meat, is one of the top two or three causes of every single environmental problem, from the smallest and most local to the largest and most global. They found that eating animals contributes to problems of land degradation, climate change and air pollution, water shortage and water pollution, and loss of biodiversity and that on the issue of global warming, which could be the end of the end for the planet, raising animals for food causes 40% more global warming than all forms of transportation, all cars, planes, trains, trucks, everything else combined. It's the number one thing that human beings are doing to make the planet uninhabitable for us. I would suggest that we have a moral imperative to try to reverse that trend, and the number one thing that we can do in that regard, according to the international Climate, the International Panel on Climate Change, which won the Nobel Peace Prize with Al Gore, is to stop eating meat. The global food crisis, uh, my worthy opponent is simply incorrect when he says that your choice not to eat meat uh, has no effect on the global food crisis. In fact, it is causing, it has caused the price of crops to go up, it has caused people to starve. As the World Watch Institute puts it, meat production is an inefficient use of grain. The grain is used more efficiently when consumed directly by humans. Continued growth in meat output is dependent on feeding grain to animals, creating competition for grain between affluent meat eaters and the world's poor. The reason the UN Special Envoy on Food called biofuels a human rights crime, despite the fact that it's got about a tenth of the impact of the meat industry, is that biofuels have caused the price of food to go up, causing people to starve. The meat industry has 10 times the impact of biofuels. The reality is that other animals are made of flesh and blood and bone, just like we are. They have the same five physiological senses that we do. They feel pain in the same way and to the same degree. The issue of whether they are the subjects of the life, I would be happy to discuss, but in fact, animal cognition scientists are saying more and more that in fact they are and they do. Those of us who share our lives with dogs and cats, I think, know that to be true. Charles Darwin put it, I think, very succinctly when he said, other animals like humans, they manifestly feel pleasure and pain, happiness and misery. My challenge to people who say that animals don't have any interests or rights that should be respected is to tell me what the difference is between eating a chicken and eating a cat, eating a pig and eating a dog. Most of us, and I would suspect that everybody in this audience, I hope that everybody in this audience agrees that cruelty to animals uh, is a moral evil. That lighting, that lighting a cat's tail on fire is an ethical, an unethical act. Uh, similarly, causing animals to suffer, any animals to suffer miserably, is an unethical act. Um, that's my cat Gracie, by the way. She's the cutest cat on the face of the planet. She shares her life with us. Um, anybody in here willing to eat her? Yeah, there are usually a few people who say, yeah, bring it on. But uh, she, no matter how cute she is, most of you don't want to eat her. And I would challenge you to ponder uh, what the difference is between eating a cat and a chicken, a pig and a dog. In fact, there is no difference. And in fact, the cat and the dog were doing uh, just fine before you killed them, whereas the chickens spent their lives living like this. If you oppose cruelty to animals, if you impose environmental waste and pollution, 
if you believe that you should not be stealing food out of the mouths of the hungry, if you agree with me that those are ethical considerations, please don't place a simple palate preference, a momentary taste of an animal's flesh, uh, above your ethical obligation not to pay other people to get things to animals that you wouldn't do yourself.